everyone so we can start the session of target fmg 2021 examination so today i have uh, targeted this examination for its quick revision a uh, few direct mcqs from the anatomy subject which is very important and uh, a total of 25 mcqs we will target in the next 50 minutes so in 50 minutes you have we have to go along with the quiz so it's a anatomy quiz kind of thing where you have to target all these 25 mcqs okay so this would be a highly beneficial and a quick revision for important mcqs related to anatomy topic now myself dr mona lisa i have done my md anatomy from armed force medical college pune and you can use my code anat10 to get 10% discount i also want to tell you that not only for uh, taking the subscription but for also attending the free sessions on the anacademy platform you can use my code anat10 now what are the features of special classes the features of special classes is that it's an interactive live classes where in, you can interact with the top educators of anacademy platform polls are conducted in which you can participate and you can clearly know what are your weak areas and which of the subjects require more of revision you can raise your hand and get your doubts cleared in the live session never miss a session so always uh, what happens if you start seeing my session you start following me on the anacademy app then you will get notification regarding my session so you are not able to miss my session also what i want to tell that after completion of the session you can also download the lecture notes that is pdf notes can be downloaded anytime anywhere read from the top educators of anacademy platform this is the code anat10 which can be used by you for 10% discount yes yes uh, dhananjay welcome to the session dhananjay i also want to tell you about the plus subscription what are the benefits of the plus subscription so you can access both the live and recorded version you can study from india's top educators compete in live test and quizzes study on the device of your choice access more than 25000 mcqs and also uh, with one year of subscription and more you are going to get the printed notes of an academy so that is extremely beneficial so if at times you are not able to attend the session live you can uh, see the recorded version of the session and all 19 subjects are completed in a very systematic way targeting a particular examination so go for plus subscription use my code and add 10 and get 10% discount i also want to tell you about the iconic subscription what do you mean by the iconic subscription where you have the access of two best platforms one is the anacademy and the other is preplat okay so you get the benefits of all the benefits of anacademy which has been told you along with it you get the benefits of prep ladder clinical integrated essential versions video lectures from the dream team qbank 3 can be assessed rapid revision snaps or treasure dream dreams of 2021 all these can be assessed by you by using the code anat10 you get 10% discount i also want to tell you about the highly effective qbank um, series where 25000 and more clinical mcqs can be solved by you based on the latest pattern of examination includes a detailed description they are given by the top educators of anacademy platform so just take the subscription use the code and add 10 for 10% discount i also want to uh, tell you about the neat pg combat what is the date 10th october is the date and 11 am is the timing so it's a session of 1 hour 45 mcq scholarship from a pool of 1 crore so till 200 rankers students will get uh, the scholarship so assess it enroll by using the code and add that i also want to tell you about the free test series on 17th october 2 to 5 pm 200 mcqs based on inict pattern examination extremely useful and the free test can be assessed by you by using the code anat10 i also want to congratulate the toppers of neat pg 2021 from the anacademy platform so i am really glad to share their photographs with you i also want to tell you about the batch courses which is starting focus fmg batch mission inict batch target neat pg and clinical case discussion batch and instrumentation so all these can be assessed by using the code anat10 neat pg subscription Uh, so a comparison of iconic and plus subscription is done here so you can compare the both and you can go for it taking the su subscription so what i will tell that if you are targeting next examination go for iconic subscription and if you are in first and second year go for 3 to 4 year subscription or you can take just one year subscription if you are in internship so grab this opportunity by using the code and add 10 get 10% discount additional now let's start with the mcq for today's session carpal tunnel does not contain which of the following structure which of the following structure is not a content of carpal tunnel your time begins now four options are there and mark the correct answer you will get 30, 15 minutes um, for marking it correct
does contain carpal tunnel does contain all of the following except okay so mixed bundle of answers has been come okay great so yes ulnar nerve is perfectly the correct answer ulnar nerve is not a content actually ulnar nerve is passing superficial to carpal tunnel so in this diagram you can see this uh, structure which you are seeing which is in y uh, shape uh, structure this is transverse carpal ligament so here this is the transverse carpal ligament and just below the transverse carpal ligament the area is uh, carpal tunnel so here the structure traversing is the structure traversing is so let me erase it the structure traversing is medial nerve flexor pollicis longus flexor digitorum profundus and flexor uh, digitorum superficialis superficial to it is the ulnar nerve so ulnar nerve is passing superficial to it not deep to this so we have got the correct answer ulnar nerve question number second a patient exhibit claw hand so what might be the cause what might be the cause of the claw hand compression of cords of brachial plexus lower brachial plexus injury upper or brachial plexus acute brachial plexus neuritis your time starts now so actually the questions are direct so just 15 seconds and we have got in another 50 minutes we have to solve that uh, 20, 25 mcq so we will um, quickly uh, solve the mcq so question number second mark the correct answer Okay, so mixed bundle of answers and forty-four percent students have a lower plex. It's a lower trunk injury. It's the lower trunk brachial plex injury which is causing the claw hand. Actually, for claw hand, actually to be more specific, there should be ulnar claw hand. So the patient will have ulnar claw hand. Complete claw hand happens with more median and ulnar nerve injury. So in this question, in this case, you can see the claw hand, and this is a case which is showing the claw hand where the complete claw hand has happened because of injury of both median and ulnar nerve. but if it is shown that uh, uh, the claw hand is there so we will go with the answer that is the lower plex injury lower brachial plex injury now positive trendelenburg sign is associated with which of the group of muscle hamstring abductors adductors or quadriceps femoris positive trendelenburg sign is associated with which of the following your time starts now okay so mixed bundle 50 percent students are correct and the correct answer is abductors of the thigh so which muscles are abductors of thigh which muscles gluteus medius and that of gluteus minimus yes absolute gluteus medius and minimus gluteus medius and minimus are the major abductors of thigh and what is the nerve supply superior gluteal nerve what is the nerve supply superior gluteal nerve and when superior gluteal nerve is injured the abductors of thigh is involved and this will lead to positive so positive trendelenburg sign you can see here when the abductors so for example if the abductors of uh, 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 for in a normal case the abductors of uh, one side will support the other side hip and it is slightly raised upward when you are standing in one leg for example if there is paralysis but when there is a paralysis of abductors that means injury to superior gluteal nerve the other side of the hip will sag down as you can see the other side of the hip will sag down and this is due to the injury to superior gluteal nerve and gluteus medius and minimus are mm, minimus are paralyzed and this is called as trendelenburg sign so absolutely like can i ask one more thing that trendelenburg sign when we are talking about the word trendelenburg sign it is associated with abductors and superior gluteal nerve injury can you tell me trendelenburg test trendelenburg test is associated with which structure trendelenburg test is associated with which structure anyone sign is abductors and uh, superior gluteal nerve but trendelenburg test is associated with which structure trendelenburg test varicose vein absolutely right to mr sudhir absolutely right so or uh, absolutely right you are correct all statement considering hamstring muscle is correct except our extensors in the our in the thigh our flexors of the leg origin is from the ischial tuberosity innervated by common peroneal nerve so question number 4 mark the correct answer four options are there a b 
okay this is okay just a minute this is c and this will be d okay this option is d and this option is c so please mark it this is c this is c and this is d now you can mark the correct answer Okay, so yes, uh, forty-five percent students are correct. Common peroneal nerve, and uh, D option is correct. Why? Because the nerve supply. If we talk about the hamstring muscle nerve supply, which nerve is supplying hamstring muscle? Tibial component of sciatic nerve. Tibial component of sciatic nerve. The nerve supply is by tibial component of sciatic nerve. So this is D option is uh, wrong. Origin from ischial tuberosity. Absolutely correct. Flexors of the leg and extensors of thigh. So all these three options are absolutely correct, but not the fourth one. So we will go with D as the correct answer. So yes, yeah, see here. Actually, which are the hamstring muscle? If we talk about the hamstring muscle, you can see here posteriorly it is originating from this structure. This is what this structure is ischial. tuberosity so yes that point is correct and the muscles are semi tendinosus semi membranosus also biceps muscle long head of biceps muscle and also adductor magnus which part hamstring part or ischial part of adductor magnus so muscles are adductor magnus hamstring part biceps femoris long head and the semi tendinosus and the semi membranosus now let's move on to the next which structure is referred to be pullis man abdominal pullis man hepato duodenal ligament gastro hepatic ligament greater omentum gastro colic ligament four options are there mark your answer so yes great all the students who has attempted so many students are there but few are attempting it so greater omentum is absolutely correct okay so greater omentum is the absolutely correct answer which is regarded as the abdominal pullis man actually why what is the reason greater omentum is containing lymphatics greater omentum is containing macrophages and which is limiting the infection to be get transferred into the peritoneal cavity so this is greater omentum which is having many of macrophages okay which is phagocytizing and protecting the whole of the abdominal viscera and peritoneal cavity from getting infected from any foreign structures now so this is called as pullis man of the uh, abdomen all structures passes through esophageal hiatus except which of the following structure is not passing through the esophageal hiatus your time start now posterior vagal trunk anterior vagal trunk thoracic duct esophageal branch of the left gastric vessels so yes mark the correct answer So yes, fifty percent students has market right. Fifty percent. So let me see the leaderboard. Also, uh, M K R K Raj is leading. Rohit, great one. So the correct answer is thoracic duct. Thoracic duct. Why? So uh, thoracic duct is not passing through esophageal hiatus. So thoracic duct is passing through which opening? Any idea? Aortic opening. Absolutely right. Aortic opening. So. major openings which is asked in the fmg examination yes absolutely right i have targeted so above that posterior vagal trunk anterior vagal trunk esophageal branch of left these all three structures which is mentioned is passing through the esophageal hiatus now see here the location and here we can see this trifoliate like structure is the central tendon of the diaphragm where the insertion of diaphragm is going on and these this is inferior vena cava opening and this surrounding uh, crux where the esophagus is passing is the esophageal opening and you can see just the just behind the median arcuate ligament just behind the median arcuate ligament this structure and the opening is the abdominal or the aortic opening abdominal aorta aortic opening so the level is t8 t10 and that of t12 okay now it is important to know which structures are passing through which opening so all the important uh, openings and the structures passing which is always asked in the mcq has been targeted here so there is a space in the right hand side anterior anteromedial right hand side 
that is called as the space of more space of morgagni and through it passes internal thoracic artery and the vein through it passes internal thoracic artery and the vein esophageal hiatus say esophageal esophagus anterior posterior vagal trunk esophageal branch of the left gastric artery and esophageal tributary of left gastric vein aortic hiatus say thoracic uh, uh, duct aorta ajagus vein hemiajagus minor opening tar for greater and lesser splanchnic nerve ajagus hemiajagus and vena cava opening say phrenic nerve and inferior vena cava right phrenic nerve and inferior vena cava so this is very important for fmc exam that you should uh, revise all the major openings and the structures traversing through this opening okay let's move on to the next which of the following is not a branch of uh, facial nerve which of the following is not a branch of facial nerve temporal zygomatic buccal mental your time starts now okay so yes 71 percent students has marked it correct so yes mkr raj kostups are uh, all le uh, leading and the correct answer is mental why mental is the correct answer mental is a branch of which nerve can anybody tell me mental nerve is a branch of which nerve can anyone tell me the answer mandibular nerve to be more close close yes you are right mandibular but not directly mandibular nerve which nerve anyone wants to give the answer mental nerve is yes inferior alveolar nerve yes mkr you are right abhi you are right mkr so it's inferior alveolar nerve which is a branch of mandibular nerve the above three are direct branch of the terminal branches of facial nerve so see here in this diagram we can see this is the trunk of facial nerve this is the trunk of facial nerve which you are seeing and its branches are this is the temporal branch this is the zygomatic branch this is the buccal branch this is the upper buccal and this is the lower buccal so these are the two buccal branches and this is the marginal mandibular so mm for marginal mandibular and this is the cervical branch so how many branches five temporal branch zygomatic branch upper and lower buccal i will take it one and the marginal branch mandibular marginal and the cervical now my dear aspirants here you can see here that through mandibular foramen uh, mandibular canal the nerve traversing is inferior alveolar nerve and it diverges into two terminal branches one is mental and the other is incisive mental and incisive so clearly mental nerve is a branch of clearly mental nerve is a branch of inferior alveolar nerve not facial nerve moving on to the next that is question number 8 which muscle is not a muscle of mastication the okay uh, primary muscle of mastication among the option provided which is not a primary muscle of mastication buccinator temporalis medial pterygoid lateral pterygoid okay so 57% students are correct m mkr is leading sudhir and raj great so the correct answer is buccinator buccinator is basically a muscle of uh, facial expression temporalis medial pterygoid lateral pterygoid and uh, we have got the masseter muscle so actually masseter muscle temporalis medial lateral all these four muscles are primary muscles of mastication and buccinator muscle is regarded as the muscle of facial expression but it is also helping in mastication it can be accessory muscle but not primary muscle of mastication so yes see here these four muscles which is shown in the diagram these are the muscles of mastication okay medial lateral pterygoid masseter and temporalis in which lateral pterygoid is opening the mouth and all other are closing the mouth okay here you can see this is the buccinator muscle which is going towards the angle of mouth at the modulus and inserting the uh, it is uh, originating from the terigo mandibular raphe and ligament as you can see here so just see origin is from alveolar process of maxilla mandibular also from the crest of temporomandibular joint and the fibers are 
uh, inserting uh, onto the angle of mouth along with the muscles at the orbicularis oris. Buccal artery is the arterial supply. Buccal branch of facial nerve is the nerve supply. And now, if we talk about as it is written here also, it is an assistant muscle of mastication and chewing, but not a primary muscle of mastication. So we will choose vaccinated as the correct answer. Basically, it is a muscle for the facial expression also. So it is used for compressing the cheek against uh, the teeth and it is used for blowing. Blowing. Okay. So trumpet muscle, it is also called as blower or the trumpet muscle, but not the primary muscle of mastication. So clearly we have got this answer. Let's move on to question number 19. Still we have got more uh, 16, 17 MCQs remaining. Okay, so which muscle is not innervated by hypoglossal nerve? Among the list provided, which of the following muscle is not getting direct innervation from the hypoglossal nerve? Genioglossus, hyoglossus, styloglossus, platoglossus. Your time starts now. Four options are there. Mark the correct answer. Okay, so yes, we have got the correct answer. So 27% students have given the right answer. That is platoglossus. So platoglossus. Why platoglossus is not there? Actually, all the muscles, right on. All the muscles of, all the muscles of, uh, all the muscles of, uh, when we are talking about all the muscles of tongue is getting innovation from hypoglossal nerve, except, yes, Raj, yes, Raj, except platoglossus, it is getting innovation from uh, it is getting innovation from vagus which is also carrying uh, cranial part of accessory now which is also carrying cranial part of accessory now got it so we have got d as the correct answer so see here all the muscles actually um, styloglossus hyoglossus genioglossus except platoglossus which is getting innovation from cranial part of accessory now yes styloglossus is also correct mkr I am get I I got uh, your point. Stylopharyngeus, stylopharyngeus muscle. When we are talking about stylopharyngeus, it is the muscle of third arch. It is the muscle of third arch, and its innervation is by ninth cranial nerve. Stylopharyngeus muscle. Okay, stylopharyngeus muscle. So you got confused with styloglossus. St that muscle ka naam hai stylopharyngeus, not styloglossus. Okay, that is similar, so you get confused. Okay, Raj, great, dear. Thank you for the appreciation. Okay, so do attend. I always take free sessions, so do attend. Okay, okay, Raj. So which is a separate bone? Among the following, which is a separate bone? Superior nasal conca, middle nasal conca, inferior nasal conca, or the crista galli? According to you, which option here is a separate bone? Okay, so all of you, please mark the correct answer. Your time begins now. So, mixed answers and bundles of answers are coming up. Okay, so yes, we have got approximately 50% students are correct. And the correct answer is inferior nasal conca. Actually, inferior nasal conca or turbinates. How many turbinates we have got in the lateral wall of the nose? In the lateral wall of the nose, we have got three turbinates. In the lateral wall of the nose, we have got three turbinates, middle, inferior, and superior. In this option, superior, middle is the part from the ethmoid bone, but not the inferior nasal conca. It is a separate bone. It's a separate bone. It says separate bone. So crista galli is also. So see here, I will show you firstly uh, the lateral wall of the nose. So can you see here, this is, uh, these are the turbinates. So you can see blue, uh, green color has been used. So this is superior turbinate. And this is the middle turbinate. So this is superior and middle turbinates or the concase. As you can clearly appreciate in this diagram. What about this one? This is the inferior turbinate or inferior nasal conca inferior nasal conchae got it so now my dear friends what you can see this is showing exactly the parts here of the crib ethmoid bone so ethmoid bone ke parts kya hote crista galli cribri from plate superior nasal concha inferior na uh, middle nasal concha 
also here ethmoidal cells are there and medial nasal concha are there so can you see all these things which are mentioned here and this is showing the whole of the ethmoid bone which is uh, which is a so we can clearly see in the lateral wall of the nose the two turbinates middle and the superior is the part of ethmoid bone but not the inferior one inferior nasal turbinate is a separate bone inferior nasal turbinate is a separate bone so is it okay everyone let's move on to the next which of the following is true about the anatomy of cerebellum which of the following is true about the anatomy of cerebellum option a globo cells are present in the roof vermis is present in the midline floco nodular lobe is concerned with smoothing and coordination of the movements dentate nucleus is the medial most nucleus okay so you just tell me which of the following is the true statement about the cerebellum cerebellum is also a very important topic for the fmg examination so mark it which of the following is the true statement your time starts now okay so yes we have got 64% students are correct so mkr is leading ab sudhir great so the correct answer here is vermis is present in the midline actually when we uh, uh, when we are seeing the specimen of cerebellum also and we see the vermal part of the cerebellum is a midline structure globus cell is present in the roof is absolutely uh, not correct okay we can uh, we can clearly i will show you the diagram globus cell is not present in the roof okay we have got four nuclei as you can see here firstly let me show you can you see here this is called as the dentate one okay this is the lateral most so this is the lateral most then we have got emboli form and globus and festigal nucleus is lying in the midline so festigal nucleus is lying in the midline and this is the roof nucleus which is lying very close to the fourth ventricle roof so festigal so what will be the correct answer here festigal nucleus which is lying in the medial most part is the roof not the globus floco nodular lobe is concerned absolutely wrong floco nodular lobe is not concerned with the smooth coordination of the movement this is not important neo cerebellum is coordinating the movement actually actually floco nodular lobe is required for equilibrium okay balance okay dentate nucleus is medial most absolutely wrong dentate nucleus is lateral most dentate nucleus is lateral most so we have got the correct answer as the vermis so see here here we have seen from lateral to medial we have got following nucleus lateral most is dentate this is lateral most then we have got emboli and globus together it is called as interprositus and medial most is festigal which is also called as roof nucleus other than that you can see here the mid part of the cerebellum is called as vermis can you see here this is the middle part and the middle part is called as the vermal part of cerebellum so this is the correct answer let's move on to the next all the veins drains into coronary sinus except which of the following vein is not draining into coronary sinus your time begins now anterior cardiac vein and middle cardiac vein the great and the small cardiac vein according to you which is the correct answer all veins drains into coronary sinus except all veins drains into coronary sinus except so what happened only 10% students have marked it right so is it uh, so tough not worry i will tell you i will show you the diagram for it actually the correct answer is anterior cardiac vein anterior cardiac vein okay the correct answer is anterior cardiac vein so my dear aspirants this is a uh, the anterior cardiac vein when we are talking about anterior cardiac vein this is the vein which is not directly draining into coronary sinus okay all veins drains into coronary sinus except so if we have to choose one we will go with anterior cardiac vein as the correct answer okay so yes okay so venous drainage of the heart let's see venous drainage of the heart so when we are talking about venous drainage of the heart the veins which is draining are the veins which is draining is the 
so actually all the veins of the heart drains all the veins of the heart is drained by coronary sinus all the veins drains into coronary sinus all the great veins okay so we you can clearly see in this diagram small cardiac vein middle cardiac vein left posterior ventricular vein left marginal and and great cardiac vein so can you see this structure is coronary sinus all these veins are directly draining but which vein is not draining i will show you another diagram okay so okay i have not included that one so please note down uh, anterior cardiac vein is the vein which is directly opening into the walls of right atrium so where is the coronary sinus opening coronary sinus will open into the right atrium and uh, but there is one vein and also small veins that is called as tibetian's veins so anterior cardiac vein is directly opening into the right atrium but not via coronary sinus it is not going via coronary sinus so we will mark this as the correct answer got it everyone let's move on to question number 13 pelvic floor is formed by all of the following muscle except pelvic floor is formed by all of the following muscle except pubo coccygeus coccygeus piriformis pubo rectalis according to you which is the muscle which is not forming any part in the pelvic floor muscle your time starts now so yes we have got many of the students has marked it right so yes great mkr is leading abhi so as yes, many students has given the right and the right answer is piriformis actually piriformis muscle is not directly contributing in formation of pelvic floor pelvic floor is mainly formed by which two muscle levator ani muscle and levator ani muscle along with the coccygeus muscle actually pubo coccygeus pubo rectalis all these are the part of levator ani muscle so see here we can see the pelvic diaphragm okay here if i zoom out this diagram you can see here here we can see the tendinous arch of levator and i pubo coccygeus muscle is forming the part of pelvic floor also we have got the other muscles we have got the muscles here we have got pubo coccygeus ilio coccygeus so ilio coccygeus is there pubo coccygeus is there and all these muscle also form a sling here so more beautiful and simple diagram see this diagram it will help you to understand more clearly so see here posterior only this part of whole muscle is the pelvic floor so posteriorly it is formed by coccygeus muscle and levator and i ilio coccygeus pubo coccygeus and pubo rectalis can you see here all these muscles are the part of levator ani muscle all these muscles which is mentioned here pubo rectalis pubo coccygeus ilio coccygeus are the parts of levator ani muscle okay so here you can also see these are the parts so these are what these are pubo coccygeus ilio coccygeus all these parts are the parts of levator ani muscle now question number 14 arch of aorta develops from which of the following aortic arch artery whether it is right first aortic arch artery right third aortic arch artery left fourth aortic arch artery or left third aortic arch artery so your time begins now we have got four option you have to mark the correct answer okay so yes we have got uh, left fourth arch aortic arch artery is absolutely correct yes so left fourth aortic arch artery is absolutely correct which is uh, the arch artery which is uh, which is uh, forming the aortic aortic arch from the left fourth aortic arch artery actually i would like to give you a uh, list where you can revise this is taken from the landman's embryology book so see a uh, derivatives of aortic arch artery the first arch artery is forming maxillary artery the second arch artery is forming hyoidal and stapedial arteries the third is forming common carotid and the first part of internal carotid artery and this was asked in the mcq that is the left side aortic arch artery which is forming arch of aorta and the part of left common carotid artery to left subclavian artery now right side it is forming right side the fourth arch artery is forming the proximal part of right subclavian artery left side the aortic arch artery sixth is forming left pulmonary and ductus arteriosus and right side it is forming right pulmonary artery the right side it is forming 
right pulmonary artery so it is very clear from the list all of you those who have done mistake nothing to worry you can get the pdf and you can revise it please do revise all the derivatives of aortic arch artery so here the correct answer will be left to fourth aortic arch artery moving to question number 15 stave cells are present in which of the following structure liver spleen pancreas and gall bladder stave cells are present in which of the following structure four options are there mark the correct answer question number 15 mark the correct answer so yes mkr great spleen is absolutely correct answer yes spleen is absolutely correct answer yes my dear aspirant see here this is the shape of stave cells so it is a question of histology where you can see this spindle shaped structure so can you see this spindle shaped structure this spindle shaped structure what is it actually this is the uh, sinusoid this is the sinusoid what is it it is splenic sinusoid so the spindle shaped structure or the barrel shaped structure you can say is the splenic sinusoids what do you mean by the word sinusoids means highly permeable capillary sinusoids ka matlab hota hai jisme permeability hoti hai it is having discontinuous epithelium it is having discontinuous epithelium of the capillaries it is having discontinuous basement membrane now my dear aspirants can you see this is surrounded by so many reticular fibers so a barrel shaped structure which is splenic a uh, sinusoid and which is surrounded by reticular fibers giving you a shape of barrel barrel means jahan pe you can say uh, uh, other drinks beers are uh, fermented wines are fermented so this shape is given a particular word which is called as stave and this characteristic feature is seen in the red pulp area of it is seen in the red pulp area of spleen so we will go with which as the correct answer spleen as the correct answer let's move on to question number 16 now Uh, which is not found in the floor of fourth ventricle which of the following structure is not found in the floor of fourth ventricle hypoglossal triangle or nucleus vagal triangle dorsal nucleus or vagus facial colliculus the facial nerve fibers over the abducens nerve or the medullary velum according to you which is the correct answer your time begins now okay so yes we have got uh, medullary velum is perfectly right answer okay actually if you will see the uh, sagittal section of the brain uh, also what you can appreciate there is two velums one is the superior medullary velum other is the inferior medullary velum which is joining and the apex of this velum is going inside the white core of the cerebellum so medullary velum is a roof structure of fourth ventricle rest all the structures which is mentioned here hypoglossal triangle vagal triangle facial colliculus these are the structures which is lying in the floor so my dear aspirant see here the important floor structures are so these are facial colliculus okay facial colliculus yes we can also see hypoglossal triangle lying here which is containing 12 cranial nerve nucleus we have got the vagal triangle lower down we have got medial eminences so all these structures which is seen and the transversely running fibers you can see this is called as stria medullaris so all these structures are the structures which are seen in the floor structure of the fourth ventricle fourth ventricle is a cavity which is separating the posterior aspect of pons and medulla from that of cerebellum okay so we have got uh, uh, the correct answer as the velum so my dear students please see this is the diagram which is showing roof of fourth ventricle roof of fourth ventricle is formed by superior medullary velum inferior medullary velum inferiorly the inferior medullary velum and superiorly superior medullary velum and in the inferior part you can also see choroid plexus actually choroid plexus is for is having a covering of pia mater which is called tila choroida and choroid plexus of fourth ventricle is the branch of pica artery please note down this is also important for mcq mcq choroid plexus of fourth ventricle is a branch of which artery posterior inferior cerebral artery what is it pica artery so got it everyone can we move on to question number 17 okay so the only abductor of larynx is supplied by which of the following nerve whether it is recurrent laryngeal nerve inferior laryngeal nerve internal branch of superior laryngeal nerve external branch of superior laryngeal nerve 
according to you which is the correct answer the only abductor is supplied by which of the following now okay and students can also okay great so 44 percent students are correct so okay so you can just tell me who are appearing for this session uh uh oh uh, raj external yes absolutely right external branch of superior laryngeal nerve is supplying cricothyroid it is supplying the only one muscle that is the um, cricothyroid muscle and we know that cricothyroid muscle is the tensor of larynx now recurrent laryngeal nerve is supplying all the muscles of larynx intrinsic muscles of the larynx and it is also supplying posterior cricoarytenoid and posterior cricoarytenoid muscle is the abductor of larynx so a option is correct my dear aspirants i have written the facts also the only abductor muscle in the list of all intrinsic muscles of larynx is posterior cricoarytenoid yes raj you are absolutely right raj posterior cricoarytenoid and this posterior cricoarytenoid is getting innovation from recurrent laryngeal nerve so all those who are appearing for this fmg uh, 2021 december session let me know so that i can continue with this session saturdays and sunday also i will take uh, mcq session so these way we will be um, solving for example in one hour 25 mcq so till your exam day many of this mcqs can be done so raj are you appearing for uh, your fmg exam or others who are appearing let me know so then we can go along with it okay so the other muscles are transverse arytenoid thyroarytenoid posterior cricoarytenoid and lateral cricoarytenoid so actually all the muscle is getting innovation from recurrent laryngeal nerve except that of cricothyroid which is so this muscle which you are seeing which is connecting the cricoid cartilage uh, here this is crico, uh, here what you can see we have got cricothyroid muscle so we have got cricoid and thyroid cartilage okay so we have got the cricoid and thyroid cartilage this is thyroid cartilage and this is the cricoid cartilage so connecting cricoid thyroid is cricothyroid muscle and cricothyroid muscle is getting innovation from external laryngeal nerve this is the tensor of the larynx now question number 18 all of the following are branches of external carotid artery which is giving innovation to or which is giving blood supply to nasal septum which of the following option is a branch from is not a branch from external carotid artery your time begins now four options are there mark the correct answer <clears throat> so yes we have got uh, anterior ethmoidal artery we have got a few students has given the right answer and they are absolutely right that anterior ethmoidal artery is a branch of internal carotid artery it's a branch of internal carotid rest all these three branches are the branch of external carotid artery so see here the important blood supply of nasal septum and this is forming casel bags are the branches from anterior ethmoidal superior labile branch from greater palatine and uh, so here actually ethmoidal artery is a branch of ica that is internal carotid artery sphenopalatine all these are the branches of external carotid artery now question number 19 which artery supplies most of the blood to the head and of neck of the femur so according to you which among the following option provided is giving major part of blood supply to the head and neck of femur whether it is a medial circumflex obturator lateral circumflex or external pudendal artery so according to you which is the most correct answer here we have got four options and you have to mention the right answer so yes many of the students has marked the right answer great the correct answer is medial circumflex femoral artery medial circumflex actually major blood supply to head and neck of femur is provided by medial circumflex femoral artery see this diagram here you can see the major chunk of blood supply and the major source of blood supply we have got other sources also we have got lateral circumflex we have got obturator artery giving branch to the ligamentum uh, 
series also but the major chunk of blood supply important source is medial circumflex femoral artery so if we have to choose one we will go with option number a now coming to the next lymphatic drainage of stomach includes all except according to you which is not directly here draining the uh, that of the stomach your time starts now mark the correct answer Okay, so many of the students has marked the correct answer and the correct answer is preaortic lymph node. Actually, all other uh, one that is ga right gastroepiploic nodes, the pyloric and celiac nodes are directly draining the lymphatics from the stomach, but not the preaortic. So see here, lymphatic drainage of stomach diagram has been shown pancreaticos, clinic node, right gastroepiploic node, the celiac nodes and the pyloric nodes, but not the preaortic node. So we have got C as the correct answer. Let's move on to the next. That is question number 21. So still we have got four, five more MCQs to be solved. All the best, students, all the best. Okay. A patient presented with acute abdominal pain on the clinician with the clinical examination. And what happens thereafter? The patient undergo the procedure of cholecystectomy. So according to you, what is the structure which is taken out is having the epithelium? Which type of epithelium? Whether it is squamous epithelium, whether it is simple columnar epithelium, whether it is simple columnar epithelium with the breast border, whether it is cuboidal with stereocilia. So we have got four options and you have to mark the correct answer. So your time begins now. Question number 21, mark the correct answer. So yes, we have got 40% students have actually the structures which has been taken out is gallbladder and the lining epithelium of gallbladder is simple columnar epithelium with breast border. So C is perfectly correct answer, which is the lining epithelium for the gallbladder. Now, my dear Aspen, this is a diagram where you can see the histology of gallbladder, where you can see the lining epithelium is simple columnar epithelium showing microvilli, which is unequal arrangement so it is called as brush border it is called as brush border mucosal fold lamina propria there is absence of so which layer is absent in gallbladder which layer is absent in gallbladder some mucosal layer okay so some mucosal layer is absent in the gallbladder so let's move on to the next now, palatine tonsil is developed from which of the following pouch? Palatine tonsil develops from which of the following pouch? So, okay. So, how many options are there? Four options are there. First, second, third, and fourth. Palatine tonsil develops from either first, second, third, or fourth pharyngeal pouch. So, your time starts now. So, four options are there. Mark the correct answer. Question number 22. Okay, 58% students has marked it right and the correct answer is second pharyngeal pouch. Let me show you the diagram for it. So my dear aspirants, what you can see in the diagram, so pouches has been shown. So can you see this is the first pharyngeal pouch which is giving rise to external auditory meters, okay, K partco and primitive tympanic cavity auditory tube, okay. So what you can see it is basically forming the part for the uh, primitive tympanic uh, tubes, auditory tube, the second one corresponding to the second pouch, you can see the palatine tonsil. Palatine tonsil. Corresponding the third pouch, it is the parathyroid gland inferior and thymus. So you get third uh, uh, parathyroid gland third. Uh, from the third pouch, you get inferior parathyroid gland and that of the thymus. And from the fourth pouch, you get, uh, as you can see here, this is 
getting modified here and merging here with that of forming the parathyroid superior and ultimo bronchial body so all of you just go through this image and you can revise all the source of the uh, pouches and all the structures formed from these pouches now bucopharyngeal membrane is consists of or which of the following layer whether it is mesoderm whether it is ectoderm um, ecto meso ecto endo meso endo meso so actually we have got four option and you have to mark the correct answer which of the following membrane is uh, forming bucopharyngeal membrane which of the following layers question number 23 mark the correct answer so yes we have got uh, few students has marked it right the correct answer is ecto and endo actually the intervening mesoderm the intervening mesoderm is absent in bucopharyngeal membrane and one more structure that is called as cloacal membrane so bucopharyngeal membrane anteriorly and cloacal membrane posteriorly these two structures are where there is absence of where there is absence of intervening where there is absence of intervening mesoderm layer there is no mesoderm layer in these two structure one is bucopharyngeal membrane and the other is cloacal membrane so one more thing i want to uh, ask few students uh, at uh, uh, is present live so uh, if you are targeting your examination so do you want me to take mixed bag and at me mcqs or you want me to take like um, upper limb series mcqs lower limb series mcqs thorax mcqs histo mcqs embryology mcq head and neck or neuro so yes mkr is telling mix so please give your choice because i am not able to understand what is the choice of the student so you can write in the message like mkr has written mixed he want a revision to be mixed kind of mcqs what about others you want mixed bag anatomy mcqs discussion session or you want session wise like upper limb mcqs lower limb mcqs thorax abdomen like this so yes subham is telling topic wise mcqs will be better ma'am okay and mkr is telling mix so okay any other students want to give his or her view so i will come up with uh, both type or i will combine it like a large chunk le lenge sirf upper limb le lenge sirf lower limb le lenge raj head and neck is a uh, week so okay so i uh, okay uh, so i think uh, for your uh, as i know that exam is very near and i uh, i want to take more of uh, revision via mcq session because that would be very useful for the last uh, because you have got one and half months approximately two months you have got but i will tell uh, only one and half months because wo time hai jab aap zyada uh, concentrate kar sakte ho so what we can do we will have a session mcq session only targeting for your fmg 20, december session 2021 examination and actually other students need an inict clinical questions mix bundle so what i will do i will do topic was wise mcq but not smaller topic okay mkr bigger topic like ek din karenge upper limb ke series ke mcqs one or two parts like lower limb so big chunk of areas i will mix so it will be okay so it will be suitable for those also who has not gone through each and every part okay so that would be better i think okay Uh, so see here cloacal membrane and the bucopharyngeal membrane is the two uh, structures where there is no absence of the mesoderm layer there is no mesoderm layer now let's move on to the next one okay which of the following knee structure support is most important for stabilization of the knee which of the following structure according to you is most important for giving stability to the knee whether it is anterior posterior cruciate ligament medial lateral collateral ligament fibrous capsule quadriceps femoris muscle according to you which combination is the best answer or which muscle is the best answer your time begins now so yes uh, okay uh, so don't worry students actually the correct answer is actually the correct answer is quadriceps femoris muscle so you must be wondering why quadriceps femoris muscle is correct answer i will tell you why actually the reason is that 
uh, quadricep femoris muscle it is a combination of how many muscles dear can you tell me it's a combination quadricep femoris muscle is a combination of four muscle vastus medialis vastus lateralis vastus intermedius yes absolutely right vastus intermedius and rectus femoris so these four muscles it is uh, it is all inserting at, at the base of the patella so it is going and towards the base of the patella inserting and it is forming a major support uh, for the knee joint why i will tell you actually many important ligaments are there the important primary ligament which is supporting the knee is the collateral ligament medial lateral collateral ligament anterior posterior stability ke liye anterior posterior cruciate ligament medial lateral meniscus also but fibrous capsule also but if we have to choose one muscle actually these muscles if the ligaments are injured then also the knee joint is having certain stability presence because of quadricep femoris muscle so if we have to choose one option according to the option provided so we will go with which muscle we will go with quadricep femoris muscle as the correct answer so yes that is the most important support so all of you please note down most important support or most important structure providing stability to knee joint is the quadricep femoris group of muscle so see here important ligaments has been shown so we have got two menisci is on the either side we have got medial and lateral meniscus and these two is dividing the knee joint into two compartments okay the structure so can you see in this diagram clearly the structures which is merging actually medial collateral ligament is merging with the medial meniscus so and this is the reason that mcl medial collateral ligament and medial meniscus are the two structures which is together injured if there is any valgus or lateral forces applied on the knee joint the two structures which is together injured is mcl medial collateral ligament and medial meniscus and after that acl is injured and what is this three uh, three ligament injury called as can anybody tell me medial collateral ligament medial meniscus and anterior cruciate ligament these three ligaments are injured together what is the term used for the injury yes unhappy triad absolutely right this combination is called as unhappy triad terrible triad and which is seen in the case of uh, injuries and in case of sport, uh, sportsman person so other important ligaments we are putting is lateral collateral anterior posterior collateral ligament but one of the most important is the muscle group quadricep femoris muscle let's move on to the next which muscle assist in extension of forearm it is assisting in extension of forearm resist in abduction of ulna during pronation of forearm and it is tensing the elbow joint key factors tensing the elbow joint so that when it is not pinched when the joint is extended so this is the action of which of the following muscle brachialis coracobrachialis triceps brachii or anconius muscle in this combination four muscles are there and the action of the muscle has been written so you have to uh, just know it is uh, describing the action of which of the following muscle your time starts now okay so mixed bundle of answers are coming up 44% so yes great mkr has leaded abhi's uh, abhi and all students maybe few of the students has joined late so very well performed everyone participation is important so yes the correct answer is anconius let me explain the answer first and then i will come up with a few important points so anconius can you see here this small muscle so anconius this small muscle is seen here and this small muscle is called as the anconius muscle it is originating from what is the origin point it is originating from lateral epicondyle that is the uh, inferior end of the humerus on the lateral side inserted this lateral epicondyle is the common extensor origin and it is inserting onto the lateral aspect of olecranon process so what is this this is le what do you mean by le what is this point this is the lower lateral end of the humerus lateral condyle epicondyle and inserting onto the olecranon process this small muscle is extensioning the elbow joint it is actually tensing it is tensing the capsule and extension of the elbow joint it is assisting actually the major action is assisting it is not a primary extension of forearm it is helping in the extension of forearm resist in abduction uh, 
of ulna and during pronation of forearm and the other action is it is also tensing the elbow joint so we have to go with one so we will go with anconius as the correct answer so here triceps is causing proper extension it is a uh, triceps is causing extension of arm coraco brachialis brachialis is causing flexion of arm flexions it is causing flexion of elbow joint they are causing extension of elbow joint okay uh, triceps is causing extension and coraco brachialis brachialis is causing flexion of elbow joint so yes my dear aspirants uh, so we will i will come up with more of the series all of you do present sabse important kya hai participation and practicing mcqs this will certainly help you for targeting your Uh, examination. So the main goal is that to target the this summer FMG session. So I will come up with Saturday, Sunday evening time. Uh, maybe in the evening time only if it suits, or on Sunday maybe afternoon if it is okay with you. So I will uh, give you the link of the session on the Let's Crack Meet PG Telegram, my own Telegram group, and also on the group of uh, INI CT Meet PG. So do join. so we will uh, we will revise and at me together all the best keep studying thank you so much we will again meet with the upcoming session you can also write uh, you can ask your doubts in the group uh, with me and that would be highly beneficial all the best students thank you thank you thank you keep studying and uh, 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 be uh, revise in a systematic way definitely you will target your examination thank you thank you students thanks